Robinson at Life Today TV, and I have asked Kim Meter to come back and tell us another story. If you missed uh, the story uh, of the young girl with the fear issues and the horse with the crushed skull, watch that one too. But there are so many wonderful stories from the Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch that uh, I just wanted to share another one with you. Thank you for sticking around. Absolutely. And I want to hear the story of this young man. So. So please just jump right into it. Mm. Years ago, my husband and I were part of the largest horse rescue in Oregon State history. And of that rescue of 134 horses, we were able to, to bring home the very worst of those horses. On the day of her rescue, instead of um, a, as a, almost a three-year-old quarter horse thoroughbred, instead of weighing a normal 1,200 pounds, Three different vets estimated this horse at weighing less than 400 pounds. You could almost put your hands around her. This horse was so skeletal that her sternum stuck out like five inches and she was all bloody around her mouth and her sternum and her knees from falling to the ground. She was so weak that she didn't have enough strength to bend any of her joints without falling. And, and she had grown this rampant lanugo, which is excess body hair, to maintain body heat. And it had grown into her mouth and her eyes in this, this last ditch effort to save her life. And even still, the skin on her back froze off. And so when my husband and I came across this horse, I looked at my big old six foot two cowboy and he's just streaming tears. And all he could do was point at this horse. And he said, that's the one that we're gonna take home because she needs us the most. It took four months of intensive care to get that horse to our ranch. And once she came home, she was so, so hard for people to look at that we kept her at the very back of our ranch so we could prepare people for what they were going to see. And on one particular day, we had this group of boys who were coming from the juvenile justice department. And these were young men who were in prison and they had earned the right to come to our ranch on good behavior. And on that day, I believe there were seven boys, and I rarely knew their backstories, but what I knew is that one boy was coming for the first time, and his name was Matt, and Matt's mother loved drugs more than him, and she did a lot of them when she was pregnant. And so Matt was born with a deformed arm and a deformed hand, and that's all I knew. And as the boys were walking up the hill, we always pray over all the kids that are coming to the ranch. And I left my group of leaders to go welcome them. And I didn't hear it, but I did see this. As I was walking down greeting them, I saw him look at his leader. And she told me later that he said, doesn't she know who I am? She said, yeah, she knows. And I saw him gently take her by the elbow and pull her backward and look right in her face and say, no. Doesn't she know that I'm bad? Yeah, she knows. And he was just grappling with the fact that maybe there was someone in this world who cared for him. And so as these young men came up, I was very aware that he did not want me to see his arm. And they're all trying to out-cool each other and doing all the bumps and goofy handshakes. And, <laughs> and I said, you guys, I need your help. We have this rescued horse, can you help me socialize her? Oh, sure, yes. So we all went back in this corral and she was hidden from their view. And said, I said, just wait, she'll come up and she'll, she'll just come and smell you and then I'll release you, is that all right? Yeah, sure, whatever. And so pretty soon her head comes out from around this wall and all these boys look at this horse and she came out like a little fawn into a clearing. And when they could see her condition, it was this collective, oh my gosh, and they just about went to their knees. And this little horse came up and we were all standing in a semicircle and I was in that group as well. And she'd come up and she'd reach out and smell one and then think about that. And then reach out and smell another and pull back. And she did this with every single one, including me. And then this devastated horse went right to this devastated young man and just pressed the flat of her forehead against his chest. And you could see him, he's hardly a boy, he was six feet tall and 200 pounds, and he just took his hand and kind of started popping her on the top of the head and I grabbed his wrist and I put it on her neck and I said, no, no, just make little circles, she likes that. And he never looked at me again. 
And so I brought him some brushes and, and he was so fascinated with this creature that would choose him. At the end of the day, we couldn't find him when it was time to go back to prison. And a short search revealed he was right where we left him. He had never left her. It was like, if I look away, she might disappear. This one creature on earth that cares for me. And so he went back to prison and, and weeks later, his counselor called me and she was crying and she said, Kim, I need to tell you something has happened to Matt. And it was like, oh dear Lord, please no. And she said, after he left your ranch, he just pulled back from everyone and he stopped talking. And he kept saying things like, I need to talk to you, but not now. And I still need to talk to you, but, but not yet. And she said, it took me several days to realize he wanted to talk to me alone. And she had to arrange that. And she said, finally, this six foot, 200 pound young man just slumps in a chair in front of me and grabs the shirt in, in front of his chest. And he just started to stream tears. And he said, my heart, my heart, something has happened to my heart. Ever since I went to that ranch and spent time with that horse, I never knew that I could be loved. I never knew there was anything in this world that would ever choose to love me or care for me. And what I now know is that I think it's time for me to start loving myself. And if the people who live at that ranch on that hill can love me and believe in me, I think it's time for me to start believing in me as well. I think today's that day. And she said, it was as if the veil had been torn and everything in his life changed. Matt finished his term. He was released from prison. He got out, he got a job. And the last time I saw him, he came walking up my hill and he picked me up off the ground <laughs> and bear hugged me. And he said, where's my horse? Oh, my horse. Nice. And it's been amazing to see, David, that a life can change in a moment. And before the Lord, we never know when that moment's going to be. It's not our job to understand how God's going to use the gifts that we give to Him. It's our job to be faithful and obedient, to just entrust to Him what we have. And in His hands, what seems insignificant to you and I, in the hands of God, He's the one who makes it into loaves and fishes. And He's the one who can take our meager gifts of a ranch and a horse, a gift, a, a cookie, a smile, a phone call, a letter, a hug, a handshake, anything, and make it into something that can save the life of another person. That is what the love of Jesus Christ can do. Thank you for another inspiring story. Uh, we could sit here all night and just talk about story after <laughs> story. Check out the Crystal Peaks Youth Ranch, crystalpeaksyouthranch.org, and do look for books mm. from Kim Meter, more stories from the wonderful ministry they're doing, and her husband, Troy Meter. And check them both out when they're on Life Today at lifetoday.org. Thanks again. Mm, thank you.